The annual Truman Award Ceremony is one of many ways which our city shares the legacy of our hometown hero, Harry Truman, with the world. It was a great surprise to President and Mrs. Truman to receive a hometown hero welcome when they returned to independence in 1953, since Truman's approval rating was a mere 32% when he left office. Yet today, many historical scholars have consistently listed President Truman as one of the top 10 presidents in our nation's history. Leadership is not something that happens in a vacuum. It, leadership stands the test of time. Harry S. Truman and his legacy have stood the test of time, not just here in his beloved independence, but in faraway places that were changed and indeed saved by the decisions of Harry Truman. We are swords of history, and we are proud to preserve the memory and the legend that is Harry Truman. In that stead, each year we honor an American citizen who possesses the dedication, industry, and devotion to public service that distinguished President Truman. It is the highest honor bestowed by the City of Independence. It is my honor on behalf of the Harry S. Truman Award Commission to present the 2021 Harry S. Truman Public Service Award to United States Senator from Missouri, Roy Blunt. We are pleased that Senator Blunt was able to join us this morning. We understand his time is limited, so we appreciate you being here. And Representative Kleber, we are also very proud to have you here today, also a past recipient of this award. Senator Blunt has been a friend and a partner to the City of Independence. Thanks to Senator Blunt, we will be able to continue telling the story of Harry Truman for generations to come. His continued and unwavering support of the Truman Library, his assistance in securing a new Truman Visitor Center, and funding support for renovations of the Truman Home and the Truman Farm will greatly aid us in sharing the Truman story for generations. Senator Blunt has been instrumental in health research legislation that is making a huge difference in the lives of those who are facing cancer, Alzheimer's and other serious health conditions and has worked to improve the lives of those facing mental health challenges. Senator Blunt certainly still has work to do, but briefly I would like to share with you the story of Roy Blunt. His parents were dairy farmers who always believed in finishing the work at hand. His family taught him the value of hard work, resourcefulness, and focusing on finishing what you started. Roy Blunt's career in public service began as a high school history teacher. From 1972 to 1985, he served as the Greene County Clerk, and in 1984 was elected Missouri Secretary of State. He served as president of Southwest Baptist University, his alma mater, from 1993 to 1996. Roy Blunt represented Missouri's 7th Congressional District from 1997 to 2011. He was elected to his current position in the United States Senate, where he occupies the Senate office of Harry Truman. In the United States Senate, Senator Blunt serves as the chairman of the Senate Republican Policy Committee, as well as the Senate Appropriations Committee, the Senate Commerce, Science, and Transportation Committee, and the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. He is also the ranking member of the Rules Committee and serves on the Kennedy Center Board of Trustees. President Truman was quoted as saying, I studied the lives of great men and women, and I found that men and women who go to the top were those who did the jobs they had in hand, with everything they had of energy and enthusiasm and hard work. Roy Blunt is a public servant who serves us with energy, enthusiasm, and hard work. Senator Blunt has noted that it's a long way from a dairy farm in Missouri to our nation's capital. Arriving in Washington, D.C. by the way of a family farm gives Roy Blunt something else in common with President Truman. The hard work, dedication, and teamwork that are needed on a farm is a good training ground for a true public servant. Senator Blunt, thank you for your service and your dedication to the people of Missouri. There is no doubt that as you have promised, you will finish strong. Please join me in congratulating the 2021 Harry S. Truman Public Award recipient, 
Senator Roy Blunt. Well, Mayor, thank you so much. Thanks for your friendship over the last several years, your leadership and independence, uh, and uh, this recognition uh, today. Glad to be here with my, my good friend, Emmanuel Cleaver. Emmanuel and Diane and Abby and I were doing something the other day, a virtual event for Ford's Theater, uh, and we were getting along so well, I think Emmanuel felt he had to explain that we were real friends, not just the kind of friends that uh, members of Congress say they are. Uh, and Emmanuel, glad to join you as one of the recipients of uh, this award. Uh, I've got lot, I've gotten lots of awards in my career. I'm not sure I've gotten one that I'm more pleased to receive uh, than this one. And to receive it here in Independence. Uh, Harry Truman described Independence as the center of the world. Uh, and I think it says a lot about him. And he knew who he was. He knew where he was from and he knew where he was going back to, which doesn't sound like that would be a big thing in life until you've lived a little bit of life and realized what an accomplishment uh, that really is. Uh, when Truman was, uh, I've got, actually I've got lots of Truman stories. I'm not gonna tell them all today for a couple of reasons. One is there are real Truman experts here in the room. I'm much freer with my Truman stories uh, when there aren't the, the world experts on Truman in the room and I get a little more license to expand those stories. But as the mayor mentioned, I, I have Harry Truman's offices in the, uh, in the Russell building. We have a little more space than he would have had when he was there, but I have all of the space he had uh, in his two different places when he was in the Senate on the same corridor that part of our offices uh, today. I, of course, welcome any of you there and many of you have been there. Uh, and uh, that space in the Truman Building, I have his desk, one of the desks he used on the Senate floor with uh, Truman uh, carved into the desk drawer along with others, Everett Dirksen and uh, Prescott Bush and uh, Bond and Eagleton and Danforth who used that office before me, but obviously it was capturing the Truman desk that my predecessor, Senator Eagleton and Senator Bond and Senator Danforth uh, wanted to keep, uh, keep as part of who we were. I will say when I got the Truman office, which was in my first year in the Senate 10 years ago, about, a, about 10 years and a month ago, everything in the Senate was and is done by seniority and I had some house seniority, so I started off at 89th in the Senate but the guy who started off at 88th was Dan Coates in our class because he'd been in the Senate before. Uh, and so Dan Coates, in a rare moment of uh, unselfishness in the Senate, and the Senate is not the most unselfish place in the world, just <laughs> ask Emmanuel about that. He'd quickly say, no, those senators pretty much get, want what they want. Uh, but Dan Coates called me on a Monday and said, I'm, I'm standing in front of an office here, it's his day to choose. I'm standing in front of an office here and the plaque on the office says it was Harry Truman's office. He said, you choose after me, don't you? And I said, yes, I do. And he said, well, if, if I don't take this office, will you take it? And I said, I would take it. And if I get it, I'll be there all the time I'm in the Senate. Uh, and he said, well, I think if there was a person from Indiana like Harry Truman, an Indiana guy should have that office. So I'm gonna choose another office. And he choose, chose an office not nearly as good, frankly, in my view, as the office he left for me. But more importantly, it was the Harry Truman office. And so really in so many ways for the last 10 years, I felt like I've lived with Harry Truman. And it's been a beneficial thing for me to feel like I'd lived with Harry Truman. Kurt uh, Graham and I were talking this morning about the unbelievable decisions that Harry Truman had to make in his first four and his first six months as president. I don't know that anybody ever made more consequential decisions quicker uh, than he made them, or frankly, from a flat-footed start. You know, President Roosevelt uh, in his uh, 13th year as president had pretty much ignored vice presidents the entire time, uh, and he pretty much ignored Harry Truman. 
In fact, when uh, both of them were asked about running together on the ticket, when somebody approached Roosevelt and said, well, what about Truman? Democrats weren't, weren't happy with, uh, with Wallace, Vice President Wallace said, what about Truman? And he said, well, I, I barely know it. And when they asked Truman, what about running with Roosevelt? Truman said, I barely know it. Uh, about 10 months later, when Truman became president, they still barely knew each other. And Roosevelt uniquely handled the presidency, but was not really thinking about handing that over to anybody else. And so suddenly, Harry Truman from Independence, Missouri, in his, at the end, you know, after 10 years in the Senate that he had used well, uh, begins to find out all kinds of things that nobody had taken the time to tell him before. So the first full day he's president, uh, the Secretary of War decides he needs to tell him about the atomic bomb, which he didn't know about. And of course, we all know the momentous decision he had to make later to use it. But what the, the atomic bomb, the, uh, the, uh, the United Nations, how to deal with the Russians as the war ended, uh, what to do about this transition from a wartime economy to a peacetime economy, which almost never had worked quite as well as it worked after World War II. And it wasn't flawless, uh, but flawless things seldom happen in life. Uh, and making those decisions, and there are decision makers in this room, and you think about the decisions you make in life, or the decisions that Emmanuel and I make in the, in the United States Congress, we, we don't have to make hardly, we, we make none of them by ourselves. There's always somebody else to say, well, I, you know, I was part of that, but I thought there were problems when, when the other, other people decided that's what we were gonna do. These were decisions that President Truman had to make by himself, and he made hundreds of them in a very short time, and a dozen of them probably as momentous as any president ever made in their entire presidency, and they had to be coming one right after another. And again, let's go back to the start. He knew where he was from. He had spent his time well in preparation. I was over at the library a minute ago, and uh, one of the pictures from 1953 is, President Truman and Mrs. Truman, both sitting at their house, both with a book in their hand, had a chance to introduce Margaret Truman one time years ago when the battleship was USS Missouri or Missouri, and that was a kind of a, that was a moment where she was sure it was USS Missouri as Margaret Truman was often sure about lots of things. Uh, but uh, we talked about her dad a little bit and she said she never saw her dad sit down at home without a book. And you know, from a little guy whose vision was such that he couldn't really participate in sports, uh, his sport became history and reading and said he read every book in the Independence Library and that just might have been true. But all of that came to the, the uh, benefit of this high school graduate, the last high school graduate who didn't have college after high school to be the President of the United States. Uh, and what he did and the time he did it uh, was an incredible lesson to our country, an incredible lesson to us as individuals, an incredible legacy to be part of, uh, and I'm extremely grateful to be recognized with this award and join Emmanuel and, uh, and uh, Claire McCaskill and Jimmy Carter and Gerald Ford and Jack Danforth and John McCain and, a, and a, a great list of people who I am pleased and honored to be included in. Uh, but uh, thanks for giving me this part of the City of Independence to uh, keep with me now and when I leave the Senate uh, at the end of next year. Thank all of you.